So hi, so in this video, we want to talk about transformations and pivots, because that's something that can be a bit confusing to a beginner, because in Houdini, that's different to other programs. So let's start by creating a new empty geometry node. And while we're at it, let me quickly create an environment light. I will do this quite a lot during the course, because it will make the geometry in the viewport a bit nicer. So you can ignore what I'm doing right now. I'm using an HDR that comes with Houdini. We will talk about this later in the rendering stage. This is for making it look nice in the viewport, nothing more. So I have a light here and my geometry node and let's go in and create something. For example, our toy geometry that we've seen before. And the first thing, and let's press Shift W to get rid of the wireframe. And the first thing I would recommend beginners not to do actually is doing transformations on the object level. So if I go back up, what a lot of beginners tend to do because they're used to from other 3D programs, they consider this geometry node as an object. So they grab it, go into the viewport, press enter, and then they rotate the geometry around. I understand why you would do that, but don't do that in Houdini. The reason is the following. The geometry node, while you can see it as an object, that's not usually how you work with it. And you can see that when I go back into the geometry node by double clicking, that all of a sudden my grid is deformed. And if I press space H to refocus my camera, you can see that my toy still seems to be where it was before. And when I go back on the object level, it's rotated again or kind of the whole world. So something is odd here. The way you can imagine a geometry node is like it's a world in itself. And what you just did is you basically didn't rotate the geometry you actually rotated the world it lives in. So this is why it's very confusing later on if you work like that. This is especially important when we talk about simulations later on, because imagine this is not a toy, but a simulation of a waterfall, let's say. What you would see is that inside of the geometry one, the for the waterfall, this would be downwards, right? So if you would go back, you would see that the waterfall would go in this direction, basically, because you rotated the world that the gravity is applied to. So the general rule is because of that, never touch the transform information on the object level for a geometry node, unless you know exactly what you're doing. But this is only true for a geometry node. Of course, for a light, and this one we can't move around actually because it's an environment light, but let's say you have a normal light, then this is not true. Uh, for light, you can absolutely move the light around on the object level because inside of that light there is no world that you have to work with and the same is true with cameras you're perfectly fine moving around cameras on the object level of course because simply there is no other way of moving them so there this rule does not apply but whenever you have a geometry node always make sure your transforms are set to zero now, of course, you might ask, okay, but how do I transform then my object? Well, you already know how we use a transform node. And this has a couple of advantages. First of all, you do not play with uh, your orientation and transform of the world you act in, but only the geometry. Second of all, you can see that with this node here, it's very obvious that you did some kind of transform to your object. So the transformation now lives in this node. And as we've seen, you can turn it on and off. So there's a lot of advantage in the workflow as well, using a transform node for every kind of transformation. So that's the first thing. Always work with transform nodes on the sub level if you want to transform something. Don't do it on the object level with the exception of lights and cameras. The second thing that is always a bit confusing for beginners is that there is no pivot. So let's say we transformed here our toy and then I create another transform because I want to do more with this. And then weirdly enough, the pivot or the you know position of the handler here is back on the world. And the reason for that is that the transform here did not show the pivot of the object because in Houdini, objects don't have a pivot. So in the stream of data, so to say, there is no pivot saved, at least not for normal geometry. Now, before you close this video and throw Houdini out of the window, this is actually not a bad thing. It's even better the way Houdini does it, because in Houdini, unlike other programs, the object might not have a pivot, but each transform node has its own pivot. So this is the reason why if we create a second transform, the pivot, so to say, is now back at zero because it kind of has its own pivot. And you can actually change that here under pivot transform. When you open it, there you have the pivot translate and the pivot rotate. 
Mostly, by the way, you can uh, ignore the pivot rotate because this is literally rotating the pivot, which is often not necessary. What you care about is the pivot translate. So let's say I move my pivot two meters up or maybe one meter. Yeah, two meters is also good. Then you can see now I have a new pivot, so to say, of this transform. And yes, I know what you might say. Do I have to every single time now have to reset my pivot by hand? No, you don't. The first thing you have to understand, and that's it takes a bit of time to get used to is just remember the order you do your transforms. For example, I could, uh, if I wanted to rotate my toy here after I moved it around, again around its own axis, I could do this in the same transform, sure, so I can rotate it like this. But what I can also do is before I moved it away from the center, we can create a new transform before we actually moved our uh, geometry. And now we can rotate it here before it has moved because we can always go forward and then see the result of that. But the cool thing is I can still select the first transform and rotate before it was moved up, up there, you know? So if you think a bit more clever about when you do what, you can actually have much more freedom when working with a geometry because you can always go back to a state where it wasn't moved yet or rotated yet. And yes, I know that takes a little bit of time to get used to, but it's actually pretty powerful because this way you can always do things that are very complicated if you would do them later on by just doing them before you moved an object around. But let's say there is a reason why you want later on after a simulation or whatever, uh, move something around that still is a problem that you have your pivot here in the center by default when you create a new transform. Can I not somehow center this pivot into the object? And yes, there is multiple even. The easiest one is, let's delete this one again, if you type in transform, you can find the transform from centroid. And this is a normal transform just with one difference. In the pivot translate parameter, there's already an expression. Now we haven't talked about expressions yet, but they are kind of little codes that you can put into parameters. And here you can see it reads out the centroid of the current geometry automatically. Now it will not always give you exactly what you expect though, because it uses the center of the bounding box of the object, but for most cases it's enough. Now this is pretty handy to be there as a preset, but sometimes if you wanted to do it yourself, you can just remember this expression, but there's an even quicker way and that is dollar $CEX, which does the same. Uh, and it stands for center X and the dollar is an indicator that this is an expression. We will talk about this later. And you put this into the X element, then CEY as you might have guessed for the Y element and dollar CEZ for the Z element. And that does the same to you. And this way, the values in this parameter will always be in the center of the object. And to show this to you, let me quickly go back to the first transform, move my geometry somewhere else, and then we go to the last transform. And as you can see, magically, the pivot moved with it because it basically recalculates the center for the pivot every single time. But again, if you need this quicker and you don't want to do it by hand, you can just drop a transform from centroid. It uses a slightly different expression, but it does the same thing. So. Those are a couple of things to keep in mind when working with Houdini. First of all, please remember, do not touch the transform data of a geometry node on the object level, even though you might be tempted to do that. Always use a transform node. And then don't be surprised that you don't have a pivot per object. The pivots live in each transform node by themselves. You have basically a fresh new pivot inside of each transform node, which sounds like a limitation at first, but if you play around with this a little bit, uh, especially by understanding that sometimes you can use a transform before you move something around as a kind of local transformation before it's then moved somewhere else in the room, this way you have actually a lot more control than in other 3D programs. And if for some reason you still need a pivot later on automatically in the center of your object, you can use the expression CEX, CEY and CEZ and then it will automatically center itself in the center of your object. So play around with this a little bit and I hope this is helpful to clear up some confusions about transformations and pivots in Houdini. Thanks very much. See you later. Cheers.